Okay, so today I have a very, very special guest. This is the amazing Dr. Jada Watson. Yeah, there's like a pause. With a doctorate in musicology. She has a BA with specialization in music, but her master's was in Soviet Russian music. I mean, so she's a brainiac and uh, she's a fellow Canadian who is a professor at the University of Ottawa. Thank you so much for doing this. <laughs> oh, gosh, it's an absolute honor to be here. So I guess the first time that I was really aware of you was when you did the study on gender inequality on country radio. Mm -hmm. And that was through, was that woman Nashville that you first? Yeah, we, we worked together on that project. Yeah. And, um, and so I followed them and then I started following you and was like smitten with your brain. <laughs> Thank but, you. Um, the study, which we will get to, um, mm -hmm. which was really an eye-opener, groundbreaking, I feel, you know, it started to make headlines across America and across the world and um, about the gender inequality in country music radio because it's always been an unspoken Mm -hmm. thing that people know um but it's never been put in black and white yeah i mean when you can actually see it in a visual representation and you can see that line going down from 2000 to 2018 it changes your perspective on the whole situation obviously um soviet russian music was your thing 
Um, (laughs) So how did that turn into this getting your attention? I can go back a little further. When I was doing my master's degree, I actually, it was at the time that the Dixie Chicks were releasing Taking the Long Way. Um, And so for fun, in one of my classes, I analyzed they're not ready to make nice music video. Um, And I did this whole big sort of skit for my presentation in my seminar (laughs) where I, everyone thought that I was going to come in and talk about Shostakovich, which is the Russian composer that I'd been studying for years. And then, so I left my, my slides very vague at the start. And then I like went to the slide with the Dixie chip and everybody was like, what? <laughs> it's hard to make connections really between Soviet Russian music and country music, except when you look at a case like the Dixie chicks, um, a group that was, uh, censored and pulled off radio and basically had their career um, completely altered by a political statement. So that sparked a lot for me. And I, um, I had never really considered country music research as a path until that moment. And so now I look back and the line seems pretty clear from that to what I'm doing right now. And for those of you but, who don't know about the Dixie Chicks and what that statement was, Mm -hmm. Um, it was actually a very off the cuff remark that Natalie Maines made over the mic when they were touring overseas saying, apologizing for their then president, George Bush, just one little sentence said over a microphone overseas Mm -hmm. imploded their career basically. Yeah. It's a lot of people are talking about it now as sort of the start of a cancel culture. Um, within popular music. And so when did you start noticing this discrepancy between how much airplay women got on country music radio and how much male artists got? Well, I think it probably was always subconsciously there, but I also am a, like a child of the 90s. So I grew up listening to um, like the Shania Twain's and the Faith Hills and, you know, Mary Chapin Carpenter. Some of my favorite songs stem from this, you know, period of the 90s when women were quite frankly ruling in many, many ways. Country radio is king and it can still make or break a career. You know, that may not be the case other places in the world or mm-hmm. other genres in the world. Um, but to anyone who doesn't know, maybe some of my New Zealand audiences or Australia or anywhere else outside of the States, what is Tomato Gate? So uh, it links back to May 2015 when a radio consultant uh, was interviewed for Country Air Check, which is one of the main um, trade magazines for um, country radio. And in an article that was on music and scheduling, he, uh, he was speaking about how um, it was a predominantly, a predominantly male, for, uh, male format. The audience was predominantly females. Um, he spoke about not scheduling women back to back and then said, you know, women are the tomatoes in our salad. Um, and then goes on to name the lettuce being Luke Bryan, Keith Urban, et cetera. And so the sentiment behind this is uh, spread them out and program their music sparingly um, and with a specific goal of making ratings. So fewer women equals higher ratings on, on your radio station. And this has kind of been this myth <laughs> that <laughs> has prevailed since the dawn of country music. There was this kind of... Um, unspoken set of rules in Nashville that Mm -hmm. actually created the lack of women and and there have been studies that show that when people don't hear the female voice and you aren't exposed to something regularly it actually becomes it sticks out and it's it's strange yeah so it sort of links to this concept called the bias of familiarity the more something is repeated within your cultural space so the more times you hear something on radio um and and also just the more um the more varieties of it so it's not just a matter of playing one female artist more often it's exposure to a variety of female artists more often and at a at a higher 
percentage of representation, you become more familiar with these, with these voices and with these stories, and then you, you have a preference for them. You actually want to hear them. So the reverse is true. This, this idea that it's, it's based on um, what the market wants is really flawed because you're not even giving them the other thing. Um, so they're being given 80, 89 to 90% um, male voices. And so that's what audiences are going to believe, one, exists, and two, that that's, that's, um, that that's the best that's available to, for them. So you're creating sort of a couple of myths going on here that's really, really damaging to female artists. And then it ripples through the industry, right? So you have a lack of female voices on radio, then labels aren't going to push them the same way. So they're going to start, stop signing them. They might drop them if they don't immediately chart. Publishers are going to encourage their writers to write for male voices. So there's going to be just this deficit of material for female artists to record. Um, and on and on and on. They're not going to get touring spots and festival spots. And so we're, we're sort of at that moment now when you look at a festival list lineup and there's like, I don't know, 10% female artists. It's, it's such a huge cultural problem. So everyone just needs to step up and change the way they're doing things because it's, it's, it's gotten to a point where everyone has to change for something meaningful to happen. And of course, in this context, I think it's really important to highlight right now that, yes, we have a deficit of songs by female artists, but for a Black woman to break through in this space, it's virtually impossible. Mm. Um, there have been a, 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 one, a number of Black male artists who've, who've had successful careers, certainly not nearly as many black, black male artists as there are who are participating in the genre, but um, black women have really not had the same platform or opportunities as white women. There needs to be a concerted effort to inclusion and diversity on all, on all platforms all at the same time. Being told, no, you can't participate in this space mm. is, is incredibly damaging. Um, and I don't even mean on a financial level, like think of the emotional repercussions of being told that you can't be in this space or, or I'm sorry, we only have space for one female artist right now, or I'm sorry, we just don't know how to market you. Actually, and the I'm sorry is very Canadian of me. I'm sure that's not actually <laughs> mentioned in these discussions. No, there's no sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, women make up 50% of the population, but 10% of radio airplay. So about a year ago, um, Brandi Carlisle did an interview with Marissa Moss where she said, inequality prevents merit-based success. And this is probably the best way to encapsulate the damage um, that, not, uh, that programming women at 13 to 15% of your playlist creates because if you think about the CMAs or the ACMs, they have their award criteria. And part of that criteria is having a top 20 or a top 40 hit on a billboard or media base airplay chart. Well, if they're not, if women aren't programmed at radio in higher percentages and their songs don't make it onto and then up a chart, then they're not going to be eligible for these awards. So if we're going to be talking about merit, and, and we're working within a system that pushes women to the margins for wh and which makes them ineligible for awards um, and special events and red carpet appearances and uh, tours, festivals, et cetera, et cetera. We're not even talking on a, we're not even talking about merit. Mm -hmm. it, merit can't even be part of the discussion. It, and, and so that needs to change. So in an ideal world, if you could wave your magic Mm -hmm. brainiac wand <laughs> and fix this problem um what would happen what would what would that look like well we'd be able to see the published chart every week and we would see equal representation and i even don't want to use the word equal because what it would what the chart would look like would be a more diverse representation of the human population. 
there would be black artists, there would be indigenous artists, there would be LGBTQ artists. The queer uh, experience is also missing from these charts, but also turning on the radio and not having to go half an hour before you hear a female artist's voice. Because they won't play a radio on country radio. Thank you so much for joining me today. It's been a so, so amazing. I'm a huge fan. I'm a huge fan. <laughs> I'm a huge fan. This has been great. Thank you. just an oversight. So I thought I'd make a few amendments. Woman wrote the code that took a man to the moon. It was a woman made a little thing called computer software too. And it was a woman discovered stem cell isolation and over in New Zealand we got a prime minister just had a baby well she's running around
Queenie, Queenie, don't drop the ball. Queenie, Queenie, don't drop the ball. Down come baby cradling on. Queenie, Queenie, don't drop the ball. Queenie, Queenie, don't drop the ball. Queenie, Queenie, don't drop the ball. Down come baby cradling. Harry, you're killing our shot here. <laughs>